Okay. <laughs> there we go. We're live. Hi. Welcome hey. to Carnitas Talk. I'm Tom Merritt. Hello. Turns out Carnitas, carne asada, and El Pastor are not the same thing. Not the same thing. No, oh, we've they, learned. They all taste Always food or is it just my Wednesdays? I just want to clarify for pre-show. No, no, it's always there. Always it's there. always like, food. Okay. One out of five have minimal food talk, but most of them have a lot of food. Talk. I was just going to apologize if it's me that. No, definitely you know. not. Okay. Definitely not just you. No. Good. No. Also, Good. just. I, 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 I think that you are an enthusiastic participant I in am. The food talk, where no. some other people are sort of like, what is with you guys just talking yeah. about food all the time? <laughs> but, yeah, I'm kind of into but, it. But we do it. Yeah. Pretty much every day. Yeah, I'm sort of into it, so I'm probably the exception. The other thing we do pretty much every day is Daily Tech News Show. What? Oh, yeah. I'm out of here. Oh. Can we do that now? Let's yeah, do it. Now. Okay. I'm into it. I'm going to start recording in three, two. Joe Spencer has supported Independent Tech News directly for five years. Be like Joe. Become a DTNS member right now at patreon.com slash DTNS. This is the Daily Tech News for Wednesday, April 17th, 2019 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Feline, I'm Sarah Lane. In Salt Lake City, I'm Scott Johnson. And uh, from the L.A. County area, not a pork connoisseur, I'm the show's producer, Roger Chang. <laughs> hey, good day, Internet. For more on why Roger is referencing pork. Not a pork connoisseur. Get out of here. We are going to talk a little bit more about Qualcomm and Apple and how Intel got pulled in and affected by their patent dispute and subsequent patent piece. Let's start with a few tech things you should know. At the request of a court in the state of Tamil Nadu in India, the Indian federal government sent a letter requesting that Apple and Google both remove the TikTok app from their app stores. The court determined that TikTok encouraged pornography. TikTok is no longer available in either Google or Apple stores in India as of Wednesday. Neither company commented on the removals, but a spokesperson for TikTok said that the matter was still in the courts and was still optimistic about the outcome. The next hearing on the matter is scheduled for April 24th. Multiple companies around the world have pledged to donate funds to repair Notre Dame after the devastating fire that destroyed its 19th century spire, damaged much of the roof, among other things. Disney, Apple, dating service Badoo, and Ubisoft are among them. Paris-based Ubisoft in particular uh, is donating because it's from Paris and included a model of Notre Dame in its Assassin's Creed Unity game. Not only that, just a quick side note, they uh, are giving away today only, if you are, have Origin on your PC, not Origin, you play on your PC, you can go get a copy of Assassin's Creed Unity as a gift to players who want to remember... Uh, the 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 thing happening so it's kind of cool right uh, reuters has three sources who say apple has talked with at least three uh, excuse me four companies about supplying next generation lidar sensors used in aut autonomous cars apple is reportedly uh, seeking chapter sensors that uh excuse me cheaper sensors that are easy to mass produce apple likes mass producing things apple self-driving car uh, efforts are supposedly called project titan didn't go well at Blizzard. We'll see how it does there. And has supposedly been developing its own LiDAR system. Uh, the in, uh, interest in the sensor implies that Apple is developing more than just software. Waymo makes what is called the Perception Stack, which is then installed in cars from auto manufacturers. They may also want, uh, or it may be what Apple's developing, developing as well. 9 to 5 Mac reports that its sources say Apple's working on an app codenamed Green Torch to replace the Find My Friends and Find My iPhone apps. It would add a feature called Find Network, which supposedly can track the device, even if it's not connected to cellular or Wi-Fi. It would also work with Apple-made tags to be able to track non-Apple things. The combined app would be available on iOS and macOS as well. Well, let's talk a little bit more about Netflix. They had their earnings report yesterday, Scott. They did well. Uh, Netflix added a record 9.6 million subscribers in quarter one with 1 1.7 million in the U.S. and 7.68 million international. That is 16% over last year. Netflix proje uh, projected it would add 5 million subscribers in quarter two, uh, which would be down 8% over last year. Netflix revenue was up 22%. Over last year, and it's 76 percent, or sorry, 76 cents per share earnings that were well ahead of the expected 57 percent or 57 cents. Boy, I can really talk today. Netflix also announced in the UK it uh, will test showing viewers top 10 lists of most popular content by category. Chief Content Officer Ted Sarandos says Netflix plans to share more granular data on viewing 
with producers and customers. So yeah, Netflix did really well this quarter. Netflix expects to uh, dip a little next quarter, especially with all the price rises they're doing. And uh, Netflix is going to start telling you a little bit more about what's popular. I'm surprised by that last one. I thought Netflix yeah. would just go on saying, you know what, maybe occasionally we'll tell the producer some viewing numbers under NDA, but nobody needs to know what they are. And it sounds like they're starting to say, you know, people tend to watch what other people think is popular and we need to lean into that. If you don't know what the popular kids are watching, some people won't watch as much content. And Netflix's whole deal is getting you to watch more Netflix. The SEO of Netflix apps is yeah. here, everybody. Also, I'm a little surprised that they are just realizing, or maybe they're not just realizing this, but it feels like they are. That's That's data I love to hear about. I love to find, you don't have to tell me exactly how many people are watching, but if you come to me and say, 56% of the people on, on Netflix as a whole love zombie movies. I like that data because A, it helps explain why there's so much of it and why Netflix is you know putting more in all the time in that category. But maybe I want to watch more of it and I'd like to hear what other people are watching. And I, I think that stuff's genuinely motivating for somebody who's looking for something to binge through. Yeah, as, as a consumer, turn. I love that stuff. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. I'm just, I get down a rabbit hole of content. It's like, if you like this show, you might like this other show you've never heard of. Sometimes I don't, often I do. If I, I was a producer of content, then that that information would be extremely helpful to me. Mm -hmm. I think they might be trying to encourage the water cooler talk too, to say like, let's show people the top 10 sci-fi movies so that they're more likely to watch the one that's number one. Like, Ooh, everybody likes that one. I guess I'll watch that one. It makes the decision easier. And suddenly you're talking to more people about it because you know, more people out there watched it because it's at the top of the list. Uh, I don't know. It's an interesting move from them. Mm -hmm. Microsoft launched its Xbox One S All Digital Edition for pre-orders Tuesday. It begins shipping May 7th for $250. The new version of the Xbox One comes with Forza Horizon 3, Sea of Thieves, and Minecraft for free, pre-installed. It does not have an optical drive, though. They're pre-installed, and all your stuff has to be downloaded. Microsoft also announced the new Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscription for $15 a month. That combines Xbox Live and Xbox Game Pass into one offering. And Microsoft also said that brick-and-mortar game retailers will be encouraged to sell download codes alongside optical discs since Microsoft found that teenagers are three times more likely to buy in a store than online. So that, How is that? true it's weird data points where they're like more people are downloading stuff so we want to make a box that doesn't have downloading we also want to make that cheaper because we don't have to include an optical drive although you can argue about whether you really think it's that much cheaper or not but they also know that they sell a lot to teens and teens maybe because their parents don't let them use credit cards online or are weird about shopping online often buy in person because they can use cash i have a i have a distinct express experience with this so um they really don't like to be uh, avid game fans, even if they're working full time. I'm talking about like a 16 to 18 year old kid. If they're working full time and they're making their own expendable money, they can't stand being limited by you and, and your control, meaning you, the parent, and your control over the internet, your control over the box that's under the TV or the services at which you're trying to access. So would they prefer the ease of use that I find in digital only sort of uh, video game consumption? Absolutely, they would, and they would do it in a heartbeat. And, you know, PC gamers are probably doing that. But when they have to go check with dad every time they need a credit card approval or every time they're like, is it okay if I do this? Uh, I'll then mow the difference to you. It starts to become a process they don't want to deal with. They'd rather hop in their crappy car, meet with their friends at the mall, and go to the GameStop and have some fun in there and laugh and pick up a disc for cheap. Like, I, I really think that that data is real. And I'm not surprised. Well, it, and that was sort of where my mind went. Uh, it was sort of like, oh, okay. So I guess the mall situation is still really working for a company like Microsoft, but it's a little bit more about getting away from your parents, which is, you know, the age old situation. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just don't want to have you. So you just don't like being tied to this isn't mine. It's my dad's. And every yeah. time you need to do anything meaningful, you got to get permission. Even if you don't, it just still feels, at least that's been my experience with my own kids. And I totally get why that they want that kind of uh, autonomy. They autonomy. want it with their phones. They want it with their entertainment. They want it with their video. They want it with everything. I think there's some hope for brick and mortar here. I think there's there's it's another example. We're seeing little examples like the rise of vinyl uh, coming back. The fact that uh, young kids often like 
books in print versus ebooks or audiobooks and the idea that teens want to shop in person i mean maybe not each individual niche of that can survive but combo stores that provide that sort of safe haven and hangout place where you can do all of that sort of stuff in person feels like feels like there's something there for the barnes and nobles and gamestops of the world to lean into yeah and i and i totally forgot to address this but real quick that is an interesting aspect of this that nobody's really thought of. And I think I think Microsoft's trying to get ahead of it, and I get it. But also, as a general trend, I think this is the right direction. This is late in a cycle. I don't know if this is going to decide for anybody whether they get an Xbox this late in the game or not. But a digital-only box that's a little bit cheaper, has some nice pack-ins. Uh, we talked earlier in the uh, morning show that I wished it was 200 not 250 but that's more of a psychological block. Um, I think that there's a market for this. And I also think that there is a market moving forward with new boxes, whatever the next Xbox is, whatever PlayStation 5 is, that they may opt to not have optical drives and go digital for a lot of their base. Because I would certainly do that like in a heartbeat. I think this is the test to see how that works with their audience. Yeah. Well, that's not all our Microsoft news for the day. Microsoft also unveiled the Surface Hub 2S, the new version of the interactive whiteboard. The Surface Hub 2S is 60% slimmer and 40% lighter than the 2015 model, you might remember. You can even add a mobile battery to it so you can wheel it around on a stand designed by Steelcase. The 50-inch display has a 3840 by 2560 resolution. That's very big. It runs on an 8th gen Intel Core i5 with 8 gigabytes of RAM, 120 gigabytes of storage, and Intel UHD Graphics 620. The Surface Hub 2S ships in June for $9,000. Yeah, so it's a business thing. You're not going to buy this for your house unless you're very rich. I know, um, and everyone kind of laughed at me before the show because I was like, "Who's going to buy this?" Lots of lots of you know folks in in the business sector would be like, "This is perfect for us." Yeah, I mean, a lot of companies are going to be like, yeah. "I paid nine thousand dollars for that," but some corporation that wants to impress people or show how cutting edge it is, or or just sees this as like a super helpful productivity ad, might say, "Yeah, nine thousand dollars totally worth it. Capital expense, we can amortize it, deduct it from our taxes, not a problem." Um, but it does imply to me that the Surface Hub is getting some uptake if if they're continuing to develop it, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah this strikes me as um, a growth area in the areas where where Microsoft seems to be finding the most success lately, which is kind of corporate space. And I could see every oh gosh, there's a there's a big industrial park near us or office park where there's just everybody's got an office in there from uh, Intel all the way down to some game developers and all of them are going to have something like this in there. I guarantee it. Because when you can get a, a room full of people and you're not relying on, you know, an aging projector or other sort of whiteboard crappy ways of doing things and you want to save all of that, like there's a lot of benefits to this that probably pay for itself over time. So to me, if you're if you're a company that does that kind of business, this is probably a no-brainer. I'd love to know if it runs like straight up Windows. I didn't read the actual article, but I would mm -hmm. love to if it's just like, if I can click around and use it like like that sort of <laughs> just make it your 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 uh, your workstation. Yeah, I mean, yeah theoretically really you cool. could. Yeah. yeah, something yeah. about that's really intriguing. But I think that's the same reason I like giant. Uh, uh, you need to make the Surface Hub available for the rest of the conference room. You can't, you can't make this your workstation, Scott. <laughs> like pull down there or something. It'd be really yeah. cool. I'd like to imagine it being in my little home office. It's like where would it go? Probably in front of the entire window. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but you could, could be whatever you want. You could yeah, see exactly. yeah, you could people out as to what's happening in there. I mean, like, I, I actually, I mean, the nine thousand dollars. You know, I like to laugh because I'm just like nine thousand dollars. That's so much money, even if you're a business. But um, it, yeah, like like you mentioned, in 2015, we got a Surface Hub. Clearly, uh, it, the well, maybe not clearly, but assumed that the company would have probably abandoned this effort if they weren't selling enough models. And so the fact that it's still going strong is uh, reason enough to believe that there are enough companies who 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 want their interactive whiteboard. And yep. this is the 2S. We're going to get the Surface Hub 2 later this year, apparently. There you go. Uh, the UK's mandatory age verification requirement will come into force July 15th, two days before my birthday. So that's how I'm celebrating it. <laughs> Uh, sites whose content is more than one third pornographic uh, and charged to access it will have to verify that UK visitors are 18 years old or older. Uh, sites who fail to comply will be blocked in the UK. 
What if the one third's really hardcore though? I got questions about this. Anyway, the British Board of Film Classification will uh, regulate the law among the acceptable forms of verification are one called Age ID. This is from MindGeek, which requires users to submit a driver's license or passport. Uh, news agents will also sell age verification cards with a code to use online. But seriously, well, one third well, pornographic. What if the what if that third Tom is like the worst, most hardest core porn ever? Uh, according well, to this law, then you don't have to verify ages until you go over a third. <laughs> Good. But but that okay. So it's like I, I you know I I can think of some domains where I'm like yeah pornographic content. I know I know what that would be. Don't want to give them my driver's license if I were in the UK and I was, you know, within these parameters. No way. Are you kidding me? No. But what about the sites that are two thirds not pornographic? <laughs> what What do you mean? I mean, I mean, if, if if you have a variety of content and a third or more of it is pornographic, well, that means still the large majority of it is not. So you don't. Oh, you mean the sites that have more than a third pornographic, but less than 50%. So the majority of their content is not. I mean, basically what you're saying is, look, if if you've got that much on there, you need to verify age because we don't want 18 year olds seeing it. Uh, and if you have less than a third, I guess it's okay for 18 year olds to try to figure That's out what, what I'm is. saying. Right. It's like, there. I mean, there are so many, there's you guys so are really many sites that I think of third pornographic thing. I know. I don't know why. It's the least, it's, it's the least controversial part of this. What about, uh, the fact that every teenager is going to easily figure out how to get around this. Well, uh, and yeah. every adult is going to be, I don't want to deal with this. No, I'm not sending my driver's license. Like Sarah said, I mean, it's, it's going to be enforced on the wrong people is my guess. Well, that's yeah. why I, I agree hundred percent with you. And that's, why i'm hung up on it because it's so arbitrary and silly and non you can't blanket this stuff it's you either got to go in micro or you got a macro and the internet's really hard to micro you can't go in and go well whatever this is an argument with the, with the entire uh legislation system happening in europe and i can't ever have that argument with them but it just feels crazy to 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 have it both ways because you either got to get all in there and then minutia or you have to look at it broadly and you can't do these half measures plus kids are just going to get around it so I'll, I'll be honest i don't care if it's half a third a quarter it doesn't change my opinion on this law at all like that's the least interesting part of it to me to me it's all about the fact that you're trying to block people from seeing something that they are not going to have a problem using a vpn or getting someone to let them borrow their id code because these aj these ids you get at the news agents just have a code that you type in to say like yeah i've i got this card obviously no one else could have ever got this card but me so now i'm well tom that's i mean that's not possible it's not like you know, minors have gotten fake IDs ever. That's just not something that you can do. Well, yeah, you know, it used to be that the kids would hang out outside the news agents and ask you to go in and buy beer for them. Now they'll be asking you to buy these cards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't worry, I'm gonna. I'm only gonna look at the other two thirds. Come on, help a guy yeah. out. That'll be good for the coming of age movies because we need some sort of new. Yeah, 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 right. yeah this will be theirs. But. Yeah. Uh, Got some bad news for the Samsung Galaxy Fold. Uh, several journalists with review units have reported that they folded and not in a good way. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman says he removed a protective layer that he thought was a screen protector and he was able to just grab one corner of it and pull it off. Uh, and it turns out you're not supposed to do that. Uh, and that causes problems with the screen. That protective layer is there on purpose. Uh, other folks have done the same thing, including Marquez Brownlee, uh, AKA MKBHD. For the record, Samsung did say not to remove it. And Mark and Marquez both are like, yeah, we, we didn't notice that. And we just thought it looked like a screen protector. And we feel that probably a lot of consumers might think the same thing. The Verge's Dieter Bone, however, says that that was not his issue. He found something pressing up against the screen right near where the hinge happens along the crease, which ended up pressing sharply enough to break the OLED screen within a couple days of getting his. And Steve Kovac uh, reports that the Samsung Galaxy Fold they got at CNBC has a broken screen that flickers on one half, though it's a little unclear why that happened. Uh, I know the one from The Verge is being sent back to Samsung and they're going to investigate to see if something got in there or if the hinge broke. Either way, it's not good. And all of these various problems with the Fold from responsible journalists who are like, yeah, we didn't treat these things particularly harsh, uh, and we're just trying to use them the way consumers would, and they're having problems. Well, and the fact that 
there are a variety of problems. That's the problem. Yeah. Okay. That's removing good. protective uh, layer, you know, it's like, sure, we're all kind of used to that when, you know, we get new phones for the most part or, or a lot of electronics. Like, okay, I could see you being like, ah, oh, I guess I shouldn't have done that. Shoot. And but, Samsung could fix that with some warnings or, or a little change of Well, design. apparently there were warnings, but you, well, the, 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 they, the they warnings were not heated well enough. With better warnings. So yeah, with better, yeah, with, yeah, with like yeah. more exclusive points or whatever but the fact that there are a variety of of issues that don't appear to be related to one another that's yeah. the problem especially with review units yeah plus they're yeah exactly i was going to say that these review units are you know they don't just send them to anybody and they're very careful about it and they come with a package probably with some documentation and thank you for taking a look at it like they really want the reviewers to get the best possible impressions and if this is happening to a lot of them, I don't think this is just random. I, think yeah. I have a very clear sense of why they're having a problem. It's because they were so secretive about this for so long. They did not let anyone touch it at CES. They were barely letting reviewers have time with it in press briefings uh, before they would whisk it away. I don't think it got enough real world use. I know they had machines like moving those hinges hundreds of times to prove that it was durable, uh, but it's not till you get it into real people's hands that you really know what kinds of situations it will need to face. And I think the secrecy around it, you, which was either because they wanted to preserve the information or they just uh, weren't ready, uh, didn't serve them well. Yeah. Bummer. Well, folks, if you want to get all the tech headlines each day in about five minutes, we'll serve you well. Subscribe to dailytechheadlines.com. All right. Yesterday, we told you that Qualcomm and Apple had settled their patent disputes. Apple has agreed to license Qualcomm patents for at least six years and buy parts from Qualcomm and all that. Now, hot on the heels of that announcement Tuesday evening, Intel announced it's canceling its line of 5G chips for phones that had been scheduled for launch next year. Intel had become the sole supplier of 4G wireless chips to Apple for the iPhone during the dispute with Qualcomm, but Intel is not going to be supplying those. Qualcomm's gonna be supplying them. So it does look like Apple and Qualcomm made peace and Intel decided, you know what? We're not gonna make these parts anymore because Apple's not gonna to wanna to buy them from us anymore. Now, Intel did say it will continue to invest in 5G chips for network infrastructure. They'll continue to look at modem chips for non-phone devices, but it's a timely coincidence. In fact, sources told Nikkei Asian Review the Apple Qualcomm settlement was negotiated for weeks and that Apple was concerned that Intel couldn't meet Apple's 5G schedule. And that is what encouraged Apple to settle with Qualcomm. Apple reportedly asked suppliers to test Qualcomm 5G modems a few weeks ago. And with Intel pulling out of the phone 5G modem part of this business, that kind of leaves MediaTek as the biggest competitor to Qualcomm in the phone modem space, but they're not going to get any orders from Apple because Apple's tied up with Qualcomm through this settlement. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like a, a, an era is passing. I mean, I know it has ramifications for that company and others and Intel getting out is kind of a big deal, but hearing that Apple and Qualcomm are going to <laughs> bury the hatchet after right. what I feel like my whole life has been, <laughs> feels weird to me. It's almost like saying that Samsung and Apple will never have another lawsuit. And that well, and I, I think that's the that's sort of where you know sometimes you got to step back and be like, yeah, litigation really counts for a lot when it comes to companies, doesn't it? Because yes, Apple and Qualcomm uh, deciding like let's just like handshake and walk away from it, and we're cool again. When we talked about it yesterday, which was somewhat briefly, it's like what. That's, I mean, did everyone, did all the lawyers just like get really tired one day and just decide like, we don't want to do this anymore? No, there's a lot more to it. Um, and obviously Apple is looking forward and thinking, huh, well, we got some issues with Qualcomm, but if Intel is out of the game and we need stuff from Intel, then now we have to make nice and we'll, we'll pay some money because we can afford it. And, you know, it just kind of goes back to all that high level corporate stuff. Yeah. And, and, uh, folks in our chat room are like, oh, it sucks that Intel was relying on one company. Well, <laughs> I think that's oversimplifying. Intel has lots of customers for lots of products. Apple was the yeah. biggest customer for 5g modem chips from Intel, but they couldn't even meet the yield needs for Apple is what it sounds like. If they couldn't meet the yield needs for one customer, they certainly weren't going to be able to meet the yield needs for other customers. It doesn't mean they only had one customer. It means they just couldn't make enough of these and Qualcomm can. So that moved Apple to the table to settle this. 
Yeah. And it's uh, probably, I don't know. I, I actually don't never know these days if these kinds of disputes actually hurt the industry or slow anything down or, or cause a lack of innovation or any of the things that I would normally fear that kind of litigation would create. I think it's so systematic now by systematic. I mean, you know, giant multi-billion dollar companies with huge fleets of lawyers all sort of going at it. It's almost happening, happening separate from the companies that are just doing their day to day. It's just like, the other thing that we do over there is our lawyering and over here we make products. Right. So maybe I, I think it definitely matter, slows but... down innovation. I think that's right. definitely happening, but yeah, it's, it's hard to know like on what scale, uh, oh, you know, depending know. on, you could argue this encouraged innovation. Intel might not have even got into that 5g modem chip business if it hadn't been for Apple. Uh, and it certainly has caused Apple to start looking at maybe developing its own modem chips. So, Hey, you know, just throwing another side there, like, it's it's easy to say that uh, having patent disputes does dis, uh, dissuade some yes. innovation, but yeah, a, a rise of the maybe it has some side effects. The, the smaller army, five G. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, <laughs> the, the, the upshot of this is you're not going to see Intel competing with Qualcomm. Uh, you will st still see MediaTek. Uh, maybe you'll see Apple make their own, but for six years, Apple's going to be buying their parts from Qualcomm. So they've got some time to develop their own if they're going to. And uh, we'll probably get a 5G iPhone in 2020. Yeah. Plus, this feels like a part of the, not groundwork, but the the scuttering around that we're all doing, getting ready for 5G, like an actual 5G, you know, actual protocols being deployed, modems that are physically working, using, like we're actually entering a new phase of connectivity. And part of that is who's suing who, who and we got to not do this. And are we investing or not? Nope, but we're backing out. We're Intel. Okay, well, these other guys will take care of it. Like it feels, there's a weird energy about it to me. Yeah, well, it's We're time cool. to make money. You can't be uh, suing about what might happen because now it's time to actually do it's things. time to go, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks to everybody who participates in our subreddit. You know when it's time to go. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. If you hang out on Facebook, we've got a group. Please join it. Facebook.com slash groups slash dailytechnewsshow. Lots of good stuff in the mailbag today. Indeed. Philip wrote, I'm a user experience designer, and I'd like to comment on Patrick Beja's uh, dislike of hamburger menus and his theory of lazy design as the reason for them. First, nobody likes hamburger menus. I've never met a UX, UI, visual, or any other kind of designer that likes the horrid things. Second, it's not laziness that creates the use case for hamburger menus, just like it's not laziness that creates the need to use drop-down interactions, which have proven to be equally abhorrent in testing. What causes the use of hamburger menus, or their like, is a combination of lack of space and or content and features that an app may have. It's easy to say that the designer should create a graphical UI. However, on a limited size screen, when you have to take into account allowing proper white space, tap targets, and so on, in many, if not most cases, it's not possible. At some point, you need to create an information architecture, prioritize the most used features, and then design the UI to allow the easiest access to those with learnable paths for the others. Concluding, while nobody really likes the hamburger menus until some magical thought reading interface comes along that can know where the user wants to go within the interface, they're going to be around for the foreseeable future. My Wrong. favorite thing is when I'm looking at a hamburger menu from a restaurant and they have a hamburger menu for me to pick my own. Inception. <laughs> you know, I always like to say, can I get the hamburger, but with chicken? I like to do that. <laughs> you like chicken on your hamburger? No yeah. problem. Yeah. I like to, I like to basically turn the thing that's up there into another thing they have on the menu, but not what I ordered. I'd like the veggie burger with bacon, please. Yes. Uh, Nick wrote in and said, 3D audio is just the generic name for multi-speaker technologies like Dolby Atmos and DTSX and their headphone-based equivalents, brand name versus generic name, if you will. In regard to 3D audio, Sony is playing catch up to the Xbox One and Windows 10, which both already support Dolby Atmos and are getting DTSX support added soon. Thank you, Nick. Oh, very cool. Yeah, that 
sheds a little bit more light on what people mean when they say 3D audio. And Mike from Kelseyville, California, what up, Lake County, says, I currently use an app called Duet, duetdisplay.com, that turns the iPad into a second monitor on a Mac or a PC. The iPad is controlled by the display's control panel in Windows or by system preferences on the Mac, and it can extend or mirror the main display. It works great, costs 20 bucks, requires a lightning cable to connect to your computer's USB port. And that was in response to our story from yesterday about Apple developing their own version of this. Yeah, there's there, as I mentioned yesterday, there's lots of ways to do this uh, other than, than them doing it themselves or even the one we talked about yesterday. So thank you, Mike, for sharing yours. And thank you to Scott Johnson for being with us on this happy hump day of ours. Scott, what's been going on in your world? Well, uh, real quick, one of these days I should talk about Reflector 3. It's a little piece of software I use to extend displays through AirPlay, but you oh, can use cool. it on PCs and a bunch of stuff. It's awesome. Uh, I am uh, very busy doing all sorts of things, but one of my favorite things to do right now is a little show with the aforementioned Patrick Beja called the Monthly Video Game. What is it? <laughs> Briefing. <laughs> briefing. Why do I do that? The monthly video game briefing or MVGB. And we do it every month. And Patrick <laughs> and I get together, two guys that love video games, love talking about the industry around video games. And so we do that and we pound that out and we hope people like it. And the only way to find out if you do is to go check it out. There's a link that's very easy to get to over on the DTNS site, or I have a convenient one on mine, frogpants.com slash MVGB. And uh, come join us, send us your feedback and see what you think. I think you'll like it. So every month we're trying to get at least as many patrons as last month. Uh, we're short of last month's total right now, but we have had two more people join than yesterday. So we're too closer to getting to that goal. We just need a few more of you out there to become members at patreon.com slash DTNS and, uh, and get the benefits of that membership. It only costs a dollar a month to get in the door. Go check out the benefits at patreon.com slash DTNS. And please, uh, if you're going to be in Las Vegas uh, next weekend, come hang out with me and Scott Johnson and Brian Ibbett and my wife, Eileen, will be there at VivaTMSVegas.com for all the details. Yeah, Justin Robert Young as well. So if you all can right, stand Justin, that. Right, what am I talking know. about? Everybody's going to be there. That old cat. <laughs> Our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com. <laughs> if you have questions and comments and anything, send them to us. Also, if you'd like to join us live, we are live Monday through Friday at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 2030 UTC. Find out more. Tell a friend at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. Back tomorrow with the aforementioned Justin Robert Young. Talk to you then. Why isn't that playing? This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Rocket Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Damn you got a little bonus cow. song. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, felt, I felt like the Frog Pants Network was like bassier than usual. Yeah, it was weird. It sounded Maybe just for me. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Yeah. yeah. Get more at frogpants.com. Yeah, it's something very. I mean, it sounds it sounds great. Yeah, Just saying. Just yeah, a bit, a so you'll be you'll be uh, shaking the neighborhood when you're. That's right. Around. Yeah. Yeah. Shaking it with fries. I like litigation mitigations causing innovations. No. Okay. Mm, it's all right. right. I, mm -hmm. <laughs> no more Qualcomms with Apple. <laughs> oh, I get what you did there. Yeah, we got more of a reaction. Yeah. Uh, a third pornographic, not DTNS. <laughs> Tom's third like, porn. Scott and Sarah, stop with the, the one third porn. <laughs> How do you determine if it's a third? But what if it's a, what it's a little more than a third? What, I'm like, okay, we're third? getting, we're getting, I think we're losing the forest with the trees here. <laughs> yeah, there, we, we were definitely burying the lead there, but it's still. <laughs> Still a question for me. Like, I totally got what you guys were saying. Minority of pornographic content. I'm just on the site for other reasons. Why do I have to give you my driver's license? Yeah. Uh, hamburger menus. Well done. Ooh. Mm, folded wrong. Yeah. That's well, you could be one one hundredth porn content, and it could. And the one image out of the hundred you have is goatsy, and you're already worse than another site that might be. Three fourths porn content. Anyway, I, but I, I and I didn't want to get into it. These are also um, sites that are charging, right? So it's like it's not just like oh, I accidentally saw something that was porny on a site that I'd use for other reasons. Accidentally like, porny. 
You have, to, you have to get into the the entire argument, right? And the mar- argument yeah. starts with like, okay, if you've got undesirable content for 18 year olds or less, you can't be on. And like, well, wait a minute. I, you know, what if I, you know, just have this one thing and it's buried deep in my site? Uh, you know, is that now you're gonna kick me off of 18 year olds? Like, well, okay, fine. Uh, if you've just got the one thing that's buried deep in your site, you're fine. Well, wait a minute, what about me? I've got all this other stuff, blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't even charge. I, yeah. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. it's a compromise yeah. to say, like, look, yeah. we just need to keep the sites that really are only doing this uh, away. It's not that we're protecting 18 year olds from ever being exposed to anything. It's protecting them from the sites that are mostly about this and how they ended up on a third. I have no idea. Instead of yeah. 50 no naughty sites for you. Mm-hmm. Well, no, only mostly naughty sites. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's naughty sites for you, but give us your information. Only yeah. sites that are, <laughs> that are slightly naughty. Let us know a lot more about well, you. Unless you're 18 years old or older, correct? Right. Yeah, exactly. I, I think no more Qualcomm's with Apple is is the winner. Yeah, yeah. I like that one too. Yeah. Uh, yep. Is it no more Qualcomm's? Or, sorry, Qualcomm's or comms? Qualcomm's. Qualcomm's. Just shouldn't it be qualms or else you lose the you well, lose the, I mean, I it's it the play on more, words, I think it's is I got it without implied. needing qualms. Yeah. All right. Fair enough. Qual qualms. Qual qualms just starts to be hard to say. I, I agree. Play. It's a weird way to say it, but yeah. anyway. I have some qual qualms with you. Uh how about Roger the pork connoisseur for good day internet? <laughs> See, now it sounds dirty because you were talking about pornographic content. <laughs> no, not kind of pork. Yeah, not porkographic. Yeah, so. not that kind of pork. We're just talking about a little El Pastor. A little bacon, a little El Pastor. Yeah, but that, was just a, that was just an offhanded remark. You know that I have to go to the taco truck as soon as we finish this. Now. No, we talked about pork on Good Day Internet for a good five minutes right before the show. So no, no, but just, I, yeah, but no, I, 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 I'm just saying. You know, I have to get a hamburger of, after the show because we talked about right, hamburger. Like, there's just, yeah, there's only so much we can talk about a certain kind of food where I'm like, now I have to have it. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. I really do want a hamburger after talking about hamburger menus. I kind of do too. You know, I always want food, and then when I get it, I was like, "Yeah, I shouldn't have really eaten it." You shouldn't. Have, I always want. I think food. It probably depends on the food. Well, right? it's like, like it's like a hamburger or like all food. Yeah, no, no, it's, it's I was like, like I want to eat. I, I, was, I was I was I was grocery shopping yeah, yesterday, food. and I I was like, "Oh, I really want those little donuts, those little brown chocolate donuts." You know, that's called home. being a human being, right? And so yeah. I grabbed it. And it's like fine. I'll pay the buck sixty nine for it. Yeah. And I ate like three of them. And I was like, I shouldn't have eaten these. Well, and I ate one more, and then I tossed the rest. Yeah. <laughs> and that's probably you know different than if you would have had three El Pastor tacos. Yeah, you, know, you might have regretted that too. But three uh, uh, hummus and and celery. Yeah, but, exactly. Like something yeah. that's like. Maybe it fills you up, but probably didn't fill you with sort of regret and dread. I like hummus and steak. It's a really good combination. That sounds all right. Mm. Like you, you you, you cut the steak into strips and then you just stick it into a flatbread with the hummus. I had a friend who always ordered the veggie burger with bacon. I, w- I wasn't even making that up when I said it oh. earlier. No, I totally understand that because <laughs> that so bad. You're like halfway to not like, be. Why not just like put a whole shaker of salt on your veggie burger? <laughs> He said he's like he liked the taste of the veggie burger, and he knew that a veggie burger was healthier than a, a beef burger. But he liked bacon on his burger, and so, he's like, it yeah. tastes really good. He, together. He, was, he was he was he was going middle ground. He's moderating his guilt. I mean, it doesn't sound good. I don't know. But I, I don't understand. Think he was. I don't why. think he was moderating his guilt. I think <laughs> he was. He was like, this just really tastes good, and it's you know slightly healthier than getting a beef burger. So yeah, men. Um, burger. speaking of beef, he also drank a lot of scotch. Mm. Uh, mm. 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 Oh, wait, what do you call a pork burger? Is that a burger? A pork like, burger. Pork burger. I don't know. It's not a burger. Yeah. No, you call a pork burger a pork burger. Is there a pork burger? Yeah, at the Bond County Fair every year. I Bond used to County pork Fair. From the pork this, Producers was, Association. Oh, is it ground? It's ground pork then? It's not like a pork yeah. sandwich. A pork oh, burger, burger. It is, it, I mean, pork patty. Okay. 
All right. I mean, there's a lot that I need to learn, obviously. This is why I don't know that much about meat. Yeah, no, we, we, really need to, we really need to embrace regionalism in, in yeah. the US, right? Like yeah. pork burgers are totally a normal thing where I grew up. But yeah, it's a, a totally weird thing to some people. Pork chops, too. That sounds great to pork me. Pork chops are not a weird thing. I don't know why you just said pork chops. P pork, pork chops, because, uh, I remember just they were always the drier chop. Well, no, I just I said pork chops because uh, Chris they were Perillo good. was well, what is from Iowa, but he used to talk about pork chops on the stick all the time at work. Well, pork chops on a stick is a different thing than just pork chops. That's a whole. Then that once you added the stick, then it totally fit whatever we're talking about. I get. Why do you even need it to be a chop if you got a stick? At that point, you just want a skewer. Well, because the stick is less greasy than the bone. Oh, well, I guess that's true. Well, then you can hold it, and then you can wander around the Bond County Fair, trying everything else. Where uh, and 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 is is this a fun fair as as county fairs go? Well, first of all, we did not. We weren't lucky enough to have pork chop on a stick at the Bond County Fair. I just want to make that clear. Uh, <laughs> we did have pork burgers though, and uh, it was a fun fair. It was a fair fair. Yeah. You had tractor poles and uh, demo derbies and the crowning of the Bond County Fair Queen. Mm. Oh, wow. mm, the yeah. queen of the corn harvest. There were uh, contests in the in the big uh, in the big hall uh, where people would, you know, put put on on show their their cookie baking, their sewing, their craftsmanship. Sure. And there'd be prizes yeah. awarded. Yeah, I want a uh, I want a, a second prize in baseball card collecting. Oh, oh wow! Nice. Who Wait. came in first? <laughs> I don't yeah. remember. Who beat you? Yeah, like, who beat who Tom Merritt and collecting? I, I I wiped it out of my mind. I was like, I yeah, don't even want to yeah, know them. Doesn't matter. Yeah, it was uh, my brother. The, the Sonoma County Fair, which was the county that I grew up in, big fair. Um, and it, you know, as, as county fairs go, they won like, there's like a horse track and a whole thing. Oh yeah. We had a horse track. That's where the demo derby was. Yeah. And there was the hall track. of flowers where like, I don't know, whoever was submitting their that's flower a, arrangement the, thing. Was yeah, a there were flowers thing. in the big hall I was talking about. Okay. Yeah. And then like all the 4-H kids are selling their stock. Oh yeah. 4-H um, hall. There was the 4-H yeah. barn where you had the goats and everything. And then you have like, your like owl and like big weird bird rescue area where you oh, can like wow. have an eagle oh, on your shoulder and the raptor rescue guys. yeah no, and, then, the and then the carnival off. and the you know like little you know yeah we had a carnival with like a tilt-a-whirl and a ferris wheel yeah 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 exactly mm -hmm. eat a brook shop throw it up on the tilt-a-whirl yeah oh, man i used to love the county fair funnel I'm cakes telling you funnel cakes funnel. never had funnel cakes but i was always i was always very into the caramel apple and vietnamese caramel food. We always had v uh, Vietnamese food stand at our Bond County Fair. Mm. Yeah, see, that seems off-brand mm. somehow. There was a there was a whole bunch of Vietnamese families that relocated to Southern Illinois in the eighties, and I guess oh, we, yeah, all right. Cool. That I mean, sounds good. Yeah, I don't. Uh, we you know it was it was caramel apple and I don't know burrito or something. Yeah, I don't really remember fair. it. The food ever standing out to me all that much. I remember the Stanislaus County Fair, and that was just because Johnny Cash was playing. Uh, but it was like 4-H and everything. Like they had kids, not mm -hmm, kids, but mm -hmm. teams who welded together their own combines and. Like, oh yeah, 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 good stuff. Yeah. Um, and then there's the Alameda County Fair, which is just your standard, you know, county fair slash everyone else just goes there for the rides and food. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, L.A. County Fair out here. We had Merle Haggard at the Bond County Fair one year. I don't remember anybody cool ever playing at the Sonoma County Fair, but I'm sure it happened. Scott, what's what's do, do you guys have cool county fairs? Oh yeah, we have your neck of the woods. Multiples. The big I can, ones, I can imagine like, you would. Yeah, the big one's the Salt Lake County Fair, which is like a that's a huge one downtown. But yeah, they're real big on that. Real big on like um, year round stuff that involves uh, like every every season's kind of basically got its own great big um, farmers market style stuff, mm -hmm. and then they'll build almost like entire fairs around that, like. There'll be rides at those things, and it's supposed to. It was originally just a farmer's market, so it's yeah. big on that stuff. And my wife loves it. She's any chance she gets, she goes to that stuff. I'm most suspicious of those rides, though. So I'm, oh, yeah, I'm, the ride, I don't uh, trust the carnies and the rides and stuff. Ever. I'm, no, no, <laughs> nice. No. My uh, <laughs> I'm not to call them carnies. I don't know. Uh, is it? I don't know. It'd be good for me to learn if it is. I, I'd there, be, there are there are people working the rides sometimes where you're like, are you? 
paying attention? No, ma- no matter what we're calling <laughs> you, you quit, are, quit are you paying attention? Right attention right I don't know. Yeah. Let me just say that there were people died at Six Flags in St. Louis when I was young. No one yeah. ever died at the Bond County Fair. So I don't remember there ever being a mishap in the carnival area yeah. of, of our county fair. And I mean, like the camp, the Sonoma County Fair ran for two weeks, well, runs for two weeks every summer. And I mean, I was there five times at least within those two weeks. I mean, it was, that was where you were hanging out. It was the coolest thing in town for sure. Yeah. It was, so, and like, like, and hanging out in the, um, in you know the carnival area, uh, you know after dark when all the lights come on, you know, and you got straw on your feet and yeah, felt, that felt is a weird. Pretty good and, oh, so much fun! So Pete much fun. Master points kid. out that I said nobody died there, but there were pork burgers. So obviously, <laughs> yeah. nobody died yet. Yeah. Pigs <laughs> did not make it through. Let's no. move. Be. You know, I'm looking at the Bond County Fair website, and I am heartened because usually I go back and look at stuff from my hometown. It's all different now. It's almost exactly the same. Tractor pole, demo derby, rodeo, livestock show, community building was the building that I was the saying had all the sh- concept. The shows yeah. like photography and dairy and youth projects. Yep, yep, yep. Sport, yep, yep. Sounds a lot like my still fair. Have thing, yeah. Still have the carnival. They have something called Power Wheels. That I, that, I think we had that a sounds like the lottery. That sounds like big, like big, you know, like uh, oh, cars with really not big like wheels. Like Powerball, like which like, I think like we bigger. had, but it wasn't called Power Wheels back then. Um, oh no, this is for kids. Power oh, wheels. Oh, Power wheels. wheels are those little uh, electric power. Oh, that's what it's that, oh, you know, okay. Cars yeah, that yeah. you get kids. All right, so Power Wheels is new. We didn't have that, but everything that's what else. The rich kids same. got awesome. Uh, speaking of wheels, I think I've come to understand a little bit more about why my dog freaks out about skateboards, but not a scooter or a mm. bicycle or a motorcycle. And it has to do with handlebars. He yeah. is weirded out when a human is on something without handles. Really? Now, why is Otis yeah. so concerned with people's safety? Video folks, you'll just have to make up your own answer. Audio folks, stick around. There's more to come. <laughs> 